from you guys about the Corvair engine. So let me tell you a little bit about it. How the Corvair engine works, it's a 1967 Chevy, Chevrolet product. And uh, they made 1.3 million of these. Sorry about the wind, it's a little windy today. But they made 1.3 million Corvairs. And let's say that about 5% of those are left. There's more than enough for everybody in the EAA to have their own engine. So here's what's cool about it. First of all, it's a 100 horsepower direct drive engine. The parts are readily available. So as you know, I did have that prop strike. Total cost for me to tear down the engine, rebuild it, get it back out ready to fly, was all of about 800 bucks, which was nice because you know, I didn't need new pistons and new new rods. All I needed to do was tear it down, inspect all the parts, reassemble it. Again, putting a few little components in there, making it a much better engine. So, Corvair, how you convert it. Number one is that you have to have a nitrided crank. There's a couple ways to do it. Number one, the way that uh, William Wynn suggested, who's the big Corvair guy, is you take it, send it to Dan, Dan's gonna send it back to you with a nitrided crank with a Gen 2 fifth bearing setup. I didn't do that, I actually had a factory nitrided crank. So what I did was I went for a Gen 1 bearing. Saved me a little bit of money, but overall, hey, thing works perfectly. So other than that, you have to change out the cam. The cam is either an OT10 from Clark's Corvair, or what you can actually do is William Wynn sends a whole, sells a whole kit. Either way works. Um, so you do that, you swap out the lifters. Um, other than that, mainly it's just buying some other components. So you buy the William Wynn uh, deep sump pan, you uh, change out the um, oil pump in the back for the William Wynn setup, you change out um, He's got a sandwich adapter and a uh, new uh, piece that takes over for um, for your oil filter. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You rebuild it and get it going. Some things have changed. Number one, you obviously you have a different pan. Uh, number two is you don't have that big fan on the top that's used for cooling. You actually use the big fan in the front, i.e. your propeller, to do the cooling. Thing works great. I'm here in Arizona. I've never, in all the ground runs I've done, had any problem with cooling. So. Very, very simple installation. So if you guys have any more questions about it, I'll uh, put some links to William Wynn's site here in the bottom, and then you guys can follow that up. Anyways, real quick, um, let me show you some of the things that we've done to get this thing ready to go again. Place the prop, as you see, brand new prop. I got this one from another Corvair builder who went to a Whirlwind prop, so I bought his off of him. Got the uh, spinner back on, balanced out, had to do a few little repairs um, up here in the front, so did those repairs. Uh, number one was um, these skins on both sides. This one wasn't damaged, the other one was. Right here, in this spot here, the gear leg actually punched a hole, so I'd replace those um, on both sides. Decided while it was in there, might as well change out to much better lines. So new brake lines were put in. That's done here. Again, this whole wing skin, on this, or this side skin here was replaced. Again, same problem here. Again, re-rigging the whole thing. Other than that, that was really the only damage to this. Um, oh, the other thing that did happen was the forks for the main gear actually had to be replaced as well. So, overall, not too bad. Uh, I think all said and done, I spent a total of about 900 bucks getting the plane ready to go again. Uh, firewall was damaged, so I had to put a brand new firewall in too. That was a pain in the butt, but that also gave me full access to everything I wanted to rewire. So, overall, not bad. Now, I've got it out here at Summerton, and uh, pretty soon we'll be able to uh, get this thing back in the air. So, hope you enjoyed. Catch you guys next time.